My name is Sebastian Hersher. I'm a PhD student at NYU. Uh, here I'm presenting CAVE. I'm the technical director of CAVE, which is a large-scale multi-user VR experience. CAVE, the, there's three parts to it. The pre-show, you walk in and there's a binaural audioscape where there's audio from a far sound field and audio in a pair of Bose eyewear, which they announced at South by Southwest last year. Um, it's The content is a migration 12,000 years ago, so it's the sound of animals migrating away from the Ice Age. Then the audience walks into the main showroom, which has 30 uh, Google Lenovo Mirage solos, where they have a communal VR experience where every seat is a unique, unique viewpoint that uh, is um, synchronized, so it's it's kind of closer to theater than film, where every seat has uh, yeah a unique viewpoint. So we deploy on mobile VR, which is pretty easy to develop for because we all of our stuff has to be basically run on phones. So. Technically, we did all of the development in Unity and Maya, and we used motion capture in order to create the animations. Um, what we did, most of the, of the development is really not very heavy. It's less than, it's something you'd expect for a video game 15 years ago. So Wind Waker level graphics because it's on mobile VR rather than desktop VR. So you don't need a massive server to develop it. You could really do it on a laptop um, it's actually it's one of the benefits of mobile VR. Oh, this is going to go two directions. Uh, one is going to be even more affordable installations or at-home experiences. So it's going to get to two hundred dollars. It's going to get to the price of a console or less than, but with the quality of a console. So I'm hoping eventually it will get to the point where people who are gamers, people who like interactivity, people who like immersive storytelling will be able to do it at home at a, at a very valid price point. And on the other side, I think that the premiere, go to the movies with your friends, go to that midnight showing of Star Wars is actually going to happen in VR, where you're going to go pay a, a cheap ticket to get an experience with devices that aren't commercially available to see an experience kind of like uh, reminiscent of what you would think of your first movie where you're just kind of blown away that you're seeing something on this like 90 foot screen. So that's kind of the two directions I see this going. Where you look is where your avatar is supposed to look. To be real time, where you're looking in the space is where other people see your avatar looking. So your experience is, oh, I can turn to my friend on, the, on my right, they can turn to me on my left, and we can say hi and nod and potentially have a limited form of interaction. That's what, what you are able to do in this space. And, and you can expect a story about destiny, about coming of age, about finding uh, your role in their community. Also seeing some spectacles, some magic, some stuff you can't see at a movie or a theater.